Jeff, I... I don't know if I have FOMO or if I'm glad that I'll be sitting on my couch watching this one, but um, what is the anticipation level for this match in England? Well, Susanna, that intro, you are so hyped for this match. I, I think you might be drug tested after the show <laughs> if, uh, if the regulators are watching. <laughs> and in fairness, I don't think I blame you because you're a Liverpool fan. The thought of going four points clear of Manchester City with 10 games to go Woof. Now, does it mean you're home and hosed? Of course it doesn't, but that would be a significant lead. I was thinking about the permutations from the weekend. Um, if Manchester City win, then obviously it's a, a bit of a kick for Liverpool, but that is not an insurmountable lead. It could all change round. Then again, if Arsenal beat Brentford on Saturday, they're going to lay down their marker 24 hours before. And if these two draw then that's his Arsenal go top. So it could all change a great deal very quickly over the weekend. Look, I can't see Arsenal not winning at the weekend, but the result of the game at Anfield, which is, let's be honest, it's an absolutely huge game, a huge game, which will have serious ramifications for the title itself. I just think it's too close to call. The only, the only note of caution I would perhaps sound on it, because look, let's be right, these are two fabulous teams, packed, full of talent, and two superb managers. But in this actual tie, only twice in the last 30 occasions has the away team won. So that, mm. maybe, mm. maybe, if you're a Liverpool fan, you're going to cling on to that. <laughs> Jeff, obviously such a big game, as you've just said there, with Konate maybe coming off yesterday... Have you heard any more about his injury and whether he might be able to make the game, this, this game of this magnitude? No, I, I just checked, Nigel. Uh, Klopp's press conference is happening round about now. Um, so I would have thought, if no Canate, but don't forget as well, Nigel, Gomez came off as well, because yeah. you would have thought, if no Canate, they'll go Gomez. If neither of them are fit, Jarrell Quansai, you would have thought, will slot in alongside Virgil van Dijk. Um, but again, though, because Liverpool have rotated so often and they've had to, it's not because Jurgen Klopp has wanted to, because of injuries, because of the sheer amount of games, I don't think they will fear blooding anybody in this fixture. I don't think that they will feel, you know, I, I think it's completely lessened that, oh, we don't have a, a first choice 11 or first choice 13 available because they've done so well, haven't they? They've done fantastically. Barring those two injuries the other night, it was absolutely perfect evening for them, wasn't it? You know, the return of Mo Salah as well, to Bosley as well. So it's, they are, whoever they've got, Liverpool are in great shape right now and they're in great form as well. But then again, you've only got to look at the individual talents of Manchester City. I mean, Phil Foden is just playing like something from another planet right now. They've got such an attacking threat. I, honestly, I can't wait for the game. I'm, I'm so pleased to be going. Jeff, we we were covering the the Europa League last night, and we saw just Darwin Nunez hitting another mm. level because it, we always knew what what kind of problems he he causes for the opposing back lines. But now, when he's actually finishing his chances, because he's always been typically in the right spot, now he's getting the goals. Now you look on the other side, Erling Holland looks like he's getting hot as well. But how much do you favor Liverpool in this game when Darwin Nunez is playing the way he's playing and Mohamed Salah? is finally back on the pitch? Well, you, you would have thought that Mo Salah would be fit enough to start, wouldn't you, Charlie, after coming on the other night for a start? So he's a significant factor. He's got an excellent scoring record against Manchester City. As for Darwin Nunez, you were a striker yourself. You, well, you didn't actually have that many barren spells in your career, but when you're going through a spell of not scoring, you need the faith of your teammates, and more importantly, the faith of your coach. And Jurgen Klopp has put a great deal of faith in Darwin Nunez. He's played him when he's not scoring. He's backed him. He's never, ever for one second said, yes, he should have scored that chance. He has always said, look, he's there. These chances will go in. And that's what's happening for him right now. That brace the other night, absolutely superb. He, he just looks like a man now who, again, Charlie, you tell me, if you're not scoring, and then all of a sudden the goals start to come. Did you not feel like every time you hit it, bang, it's going in? Yes. You just as soon as, you, as soon as you walked onto the field, you felt, I know I'll score today because I'm in that mode right now. 
Absolutely, and we, we saw that a, a bit from um, uh, Juninho last night, where he, he was he was just in a in a good mood against Leverkusen and Karabag. All of a sudden, they start scoring goals because he's in that mode when. Anything you touch, it goes right because you're in form, and Darwin Nunez is certainly at that level right now. Yeah, and, and previously, earlier in the season, he, he was whatever he did, he just would not go in the net, no matter what happened. And then they get strikers get into that period where they try too hard, and it's not natural, and it all jams up. He's through that now, and he's in. He's really he's in fantastic form. I mean, look, you, you can't question. Erling Haaland. His numbers are down on last season, but of course they're going to be down because it was an unbelievable season. And also teams know not how to play against Manchester City, but they're just more used to Erling Haaland and the threat that he offers. Incredibly difficult to nullify, but you also get that feeling from him as well. Now, he's not so, it's not a case of not desperate to score. Of course he wants to score. He is a marksman, but as long as Manchester City win, I genuinely think he's a player without ego despite the huge amount of goals he scores. You could argue, actually, you tell me what you think, guys, you could argue that Foden is an equal threat to Liverpool on Sunday than Erling Haaland, because he's in such form right now, scoring goals, as we said the other day. He's not just scoring goals. Pep said he's the best player in the Premier League right now. Also, he's scoring goals that are winning games. Mm. You know, It's not for no reason that his teammates call him the sniper, is it? So, Jeff, uh, football is romantic. It is high theater. Uh, we have Trent Alexander-Arnold and Erling Haaland both beefing, trading words. What do you make of this? Do they, are they feeling the pressure of sort of the uh, weight of this match, or are they just stoking the fires for fun here? That's what I think of it. I think it's an absolute godsend. I think it's fantastic <laughs> because we are so much in, in now where you've got media-trained players who never really offer an opinion, who don't say too much. They want to be on message. Now, Trent Alexander-Arnold is a Liverpool lad. He grew up supporting the team. It is in his heart. It's in his soul. And so he said it. So I think, great, absolutely great. Good for him. I don't necessarily agree with it. And I equally liked Erling Haaland's response when, he, when it was put to him. He said with a real wry grin on his face, well, he hasn't won the treble, so perhaps... He doesn't actually know what it feels like. Lovely, lovely little exchange. We need these things in sport. They add to it. And they weren't done with malice, but it does add a little bit of spice to the occasion, doesn't it? It does. I have to also just assuage your worry about Sue's with the drug test. We did actually do that before we jumped on with you. <laughs> it turns out she's just very, very high on Darwin Nunez. <laughs> You can't Jeff, blame yeah. me. Jeff, obviously we know Sunday Anfield's going to be absolutely rocking with the atmosphere, with what's at stake, you know, chasing for the Premier League title. I see this game going in the favour of Liverpool because for me, they have the better defensive record. How do you see this game going? Uh, well, we, we both know that they're going to go for it. There's, there's no question of that. And I think that what also adds to the intrigue of this game as well, Nigel, is these two managers, this could be, of course, this is the other thing, this could be the last time that Pep faces Jurgen Klopp at Anfield. Might not be the last time he faces him, they could meet in the FA Cup final, we don't know. So that adds to the occasion. And there is absolutely no question that these two have made each other better managers. I think they are both the toughest opponent either have ever come up against. And they've both adapted their games, not necessarily specifically for that match, but for that team. Do you remember when Pep said about Liverpool's front three? He said, well, you know, they, they are frightening. They are some, you know, he's hugely impressed with them. And Jurgen Kopp as well. He's always intrigued by what um, Pep does. But again, the, the beauty of it is that these two... They don't really trade barbs. They're fiercely competitive. But I think they actually quite like each other. I think there's an enormous amount of respect. I think they both acknowledge that had the other one not been there, they went on bag for you know, more trophies. I mean, remember when Liverpool won the Champions League, Nigel? Do you remember when they won it? He was still in the dressing room, Klopp, and he got a phone call from Pep to say congratulations, which you know was a really, really nice touch. So huge respect, huge rivalry. 
and a huge amount at stake on Sunday. Can't wait. Bring it on. And then, of course, whatever happens, we're only a few weeks away from Manchester City against Arsenal. So whatever happens, this is far oh. from done. All right. I, I know, Jeff, you said that, you know, there's a whole lot that can happen and change after this weekend and all the different permutations. But but in your in your gut, you have been covering this league for, for a long time. Do you believe the title will be won on Sunday? Not in a million years. Okay. Uh, no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I think you're only asking me that within the back of your mind. If Liverpool win, does that mean we yes, will win it? Jeff. In your mind. Yeah. Wait, Jeff, no, if I'm Arsenal not... win, are they winning it? I thought we were friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I wouldn't go there. I, I, there's too, too many twists and turns. Too many twists <laughs> and turns. But I'll repeat myself. If Liverpool win on Sunday, that is a massive step forward. But don't forget... Arsenal will only be two points behind them.